What's going on guys, so Marty here and today I'm going to actually be giving you guys some basic Rust tips and tricks from myself and my Rust community. So thank you guys for that, your names will be at the end for everyone that has um, added some extra little tips and tricks for me for this video. So I've personally dabbled in Rust a little bit myself, I have 2,779 hours as of today on my main account. And with this experience I have been able to come up with a list of basic tips and tricks for you guys so that you can get from this to this to this. Soon you're going to be going from a naked to a PvP chad just by watching these simple tips and tricks. Alrighty, so tip number one. This is basically the only rule for Rust and this is not to ever fully trust anyone that you don't personally know. Once you do get to know them, if you do end up teaming with someone that you don't know, then sometimes obviously you can have some decent people and they're not going to betray you. But just keep in mind, there is a chance that these guys do not have the best intentions for your survival and your gaming experience. This doesn't necessarily mean that you can't make friends in Rust. I have personally made a lot of friends over my 2000 hours in Rust but I have also met a lot more people that have tried to make plays on me. So just keep that in mind guys, because that is going to save you a lot of kits and a lot of loot in the future. When starting your wipe, press G to check the map and find a location right for you. Once you have found where you want to build your base location, place extra sleeping bags while getting closer to your building location. In case you do die, you can respawn closer to where you want to build. This also becomes a lot more helpful in the future because if you do have sleeping bags nearby your base location and you do get killed and you're on a timer inside of your base, then it does mean that you can respawn closer to your base instead of having to respawn in tier one. Freshwater locations can be found at shallow lakes, swamps, or freshwater streams. These can all be found quite easily on the maps and pictures here circle what each of these locations look like. You also have a high chance of getting fresh water spawns from oxens and other monuments like that out of the food crates because they usually have water bottles and water jugs inside of them. Keep the water jugs for your base because you'll always need to refill your hydration. Another tip is if you're basing on fresh water, Build your foundations slightly above the fresh water so that you don't get wet while you're in the base, but also so that you can look through the foundation and actually drink the fresh water while you're inside of your base. This is obviously so that you can increase your hydration and don't have to go out and look for fresh water, but also so that you minimize the risk of getting killed while you're outside drinking the water outside of your base. You can do this through any foundation tier, as long as the foundation isn't too high. Another important tip for fresh players is find a server that's right for you. Officials are the official face punch servers and these can be quite challenging for you to first start on because there is a lot of sweatier players on it. This also includes some modded servers because people with less time such as myself like to play on them. Other servers are modded as I just mentioned. You can get two times, three times plus more than that and that will just give you two times or three times resources etc. You can also find non-PVP servers, non-griefing servers and max team size servers. So if you only are a two man then maybe you're not going to want to go up against Zergs in officials and you'll go into a solo duo trio server. If you really are struggling with PVP then what I would recommend to do is go into a low population server, so a server that doesn't have many players in it, and learn the basics of the game there and then move your way over to officials or modded. This is the best way to learn the game if you're struggling with PvP and a good way for you to enjoy all aspects of the game without getting killed by chads. If you have a stack of items in your inventory, you can actually drag only one of the items by just right clicking and dragging down to the next square. You can also split the stacks by halves by holding the middle mouse button and dragging to the next square. Finally, you can also split them into thirds by holding shift and middle mouse button and dragging them over into the next square. This is the most beneficial when it comes to splitting ores for your furnaces so that you can cook a three stack of ore at a faster rate. Always split one ore into three stacks in a furnace so that it cooks faster. This is also the same in the campfire. Let's say for example you have bear meat. Split the bear meat into two stacks so that it can cook the fastest. But keep in mind if you're splitting it into two stacks instead of three, the meat can burn. So if you want to remove the risk of burning your meat, split the stacks of meat into three in the campfire so that it spits out the meat. But keep in mind, always pick up the meat that has popped out of the campfire and turn the campfire back on. The next tip is what comes to say. So this is going to be a very important tip for new players because obviously you guys aren't going to know as well what components are going to do what. So this is going to be a screen of what components are the best. Middle components and components to get rid of if you need to make space. The top tier components in my opinion though are components for weapons and gears. If you're playing solo, you don't need code locks, so always use key locks. They are also quieter, but can only be opened by one person without a key. 
On the topic of key locks, never actually craft keys. These aren't going to come in handy unless you do have multiple people. But what I'd recommend to do instead is have the person that placed the door and the lock to be the door master until you guys do get code locks. This is so that if, in case one of you die and you do have a key on you, a random player can't take the key and then go into your base and take all of your loot. Hold E on key locks to make sure that they're actually locked at all times. There will be a little red square on a key lock when it is locked and a little green square on a key lock when it is unlocked. Make sure this square is always green unless you're removing the key lock. This is the same for the code lock but it will be a light instead. If the light is green make sure you enter in a code so that the code lock is locked. Otherwise any player is going to be able to enter in a code and you will lose access of your base. If you're teaming with someone that you don't fully trust, you can make guest codes that are going to be different compared to the main codes for code locks. And with guest codes, this means that the player will not be able to unlock the code and change it to another code. This is to avoid being code rated by other players and will save you your base and your loot. Now, I wasn't actually going to add this tip until one of my later videos about building tips, but always upgrade your door frames to stone tier or higher to ensure people can't get through that instead of going through your door. This example here shows that I'm shooting down a twig door frame even though there was a sheet metal door on it as they did not upgrade their door frame to stone or above. My main recommendation is always keep your door frame at the same tier or a higher tier than what your door is currently at. For example, if you have a sheet metal door, make sure you don't have a twig or wooden door frame, have a stone or higher tier. If you have an armored door, make sure you have a metal door frame or an armored door frame. When looting, you can loot multiple ways. You can right click for the item to quickly go over into your inventory. You can left click and drag over into a square in your inventory to drag an item into your inventory. Or you can press H, which is your hover loot key, to quickly loot all of the items that your cursor hovers over. I would recommend changing this to an easily accessible key or mouse button as it is a very beneficial mechanic to be using. I personally use one of my mouse buttons to hover loot and I do it almost every time I'm looting a player or dumping stuff into a box. Base organization. Try and keep your base as organized as you can because if you die and you want to quickly go and make plays on the person that just killed you, at least you know where your guns box is or a box is that you need to access quickly so that you can do that and get out with minimal time. This is also a lot more space efficient in your loot boxes so that you don't have, for example, half a stack of road sign in one box and half a stack in another box. This is taking up two spaces of inventory space in your base when it could be only taking up one. This is emphasized more when the base is even more unorganized. Always keep a dump box as well in case you do need to quickly dump all of your loot into a dump box and then get back out of your base so that you can go and help your teammate in PvP or after going and picking up all of your collected items after getting killed by a ball. How to avoid being shot at by the attack helicopter. This is actually quite an easy one but it's going to be a lot more challenging for the people that don't know. If you have more than two items of clothing on, you will be classified as hostile to the attack helicopter. The attack helicopter will always target you. If you are using a hazmat or other full body items, then it will not target you as it is only counted as one item of clothing. The attack helicopter will also target you if you have a projectile weapon in your hotbar. For example, take your AK out of your hotbar and put it into your inventory and the attack helicopter will not target you. Although keep in mind you can keep bows out and an attack helicopter will not target you for using your bow. So if there is an attack helicopter route, it is always safe to keep your bow out in case you do need to protect yourself against other players. Know your map tiers. There are three tiers on the map. There's tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3. Tier 1 is where everyone will respawn when they're respawning randomly and not on a sleeping bag. This is the only place you can respawn randomly. The tier 1 monuments are Outpost, Oxen's Gas Station, Supermarket, Lighthouse, Abandoned Cabins, Harbour, and Junkyard. Most of these do have green cards, so make sure to pick them up if you are planning on running tier 2 monument puzzles, which I will get into more detail in a future tips video. If you're looking to avoid PvP, I would avoid going to Oxum's gas station, supermarket or junkyard at early game because Oxum's and supermarket always have PvP and junkyard was literally made by Facebunch for PvP. So try and avoid those areas, although they are all good hotspots for PvP because they also do have a recycler and the chance to spawn military crates. Learn recycler spawns. 
Recyclers are very important so that you can recycle components that you don't want so that you can recycle them into scrap and other resources. It's extremely helpful for progression but can be hotspots for early game. Always be careful when recycling because a recycler is very loud and can attract nearby players. Learn where safe zones are. Face Punch have been adding safe zones a lot recently in Rust and we currently now have four safe zones. We have the horse stables, the fishing villages, the outpost and the bandit camp. The outpost and bandit camp are both very good places to base around as they do have recyclers and also give you access to a lot of items that you can trade for to shops or to vendors. These items can go from stone and wood all the way up to tactical gloves and LR300s. You're also invulnerable to other players in safe zones. So while you're in safe zones, you cannot be killed by other players. Just be careful though, you still can die in safe zones if you're too cold, dying of starvation, dying of dehydration, or if for whatever reason you get killed on the fires in the outpost. Another tip is that you can kill yourself in the safe zones and no other players can actually loot you while you're dead in the safe zones. So this is what a lot of people do when they're planning on basing around the safe zone but don't yet have a base. This is so that you can secure your loot inside of the safe zone to ensure that no one else can loot it. Keep in mind your loot can still despawn, so make sure you're back in time before it does despawn. If you become hostile to the safe zone and get too close, the safe zone will target you and consider you hostile. You will be hostile for 30 minutes. Avoid the safe zone for 30 minutes. If you have the red crosshair on your screen, top right, it means you're hostile to the safe zone currently. So just avoid the safe zone until that goes away. You can check where your time is on by pressing tab when you're close enough and the red crosshair is up on your screen. Another important tip is never underestimate a naked. For example, if you are in a fight, Hazzy versus Hazzy or something like that, and you have two SARs, if you kill a Hazzy player and you're very low, the naked could potentially try and make plays on you with an Eoko, bow, spear, or even their rock. So if you don't kill the naked on sight, just be wary of where they are at all times so that they can't try and make plays on you. This is definitely going to save you some kits in the future, or if you're the naked, could potentially gain you some kits in the future. This is another really important tip that even a lot of high powered players do, in my opinion, and that is they use their torches and flashlights too much. So my tip is to use torches and flashlights sparingly in the nighttime. Don't walk around with the torch on all night because you're gonna be an extremely easy target to spot and you will get stalks like Prey of the Night by the Hunters. If you are struggling to remember to turn off your flashlight or if you're thinking that you're using it too much, if you really can't see that well at night, maybe just craft some night vision goggles or just avoid going out at night in general. Nights do only last 15 minutes on vanilla servers and daytime lasts for 45 minutes. The best way to look for scrap is by farming the road and then going and recycling the components you get at a recycler. If you are struggling to do this and you keep getting killed in PvP, the safest way to farm scrap is by getting low grade and a boat and farming on the water. If you start getting attacked while you're on the water in a boat, you can press X and it will swap your seats. If you keep pressing X while the boat is driving, then the boat will continue to drive while you're not in the driver's seat. If you're not holding W and you keep pressing X and you go to the driver's seat, the boat will stop. So always hold W while you're pressing X to make sure that the boat continues to drive when you get back into the driver's seat. This is to make sure that the players cannot catch up to you in the other boat if they are chasing you in a boat. If they're chasing you in a helicopter, you're most likely in trouble. If you are getting chased and you have a diving tank and a swimsuit and you think it's unlikely that you're going to be able to get away from the other players, put the diving tank and swimsuit on, turn off your boat, take the low grade out and just dive down. You have 600 seconds to swim away before you lose all of your oxygen and have to go to the surface. If you are swimming in the water, and for whatever reason you get into PVP in the water and someone else is in the water as well, if you have a melee weapon, then you can actually attack the player in the water with your melee weapon. You cannot do this with other weapons, such as projectile weapons. My recommendation would be to keep a jackhammer on you, a salvage sword, or a combat knife, as these are all very good melee weapons. Every time I teach one of my new mates how to play, I always tell them, carry spare cloth. It always saves inventory space and saves you from having to have 12 bandages when you might need 12 bandages. That is going to take up too many slots. It's gonna take up four of your slots in your inventory. Instead of having enough cloth to craft the 12 bandages, which will only take up one slot in your inventory. This will always come in handy as you don't know if you're going to get attacked by a naked, an animal, or something else. If you're not in PVP, try and avoid healing with your med sticks 
as they are a very valuable item to have during PvP. Always try and heal with bandages if you have enough cloth so that you can keep your med sticks for when you really need them the most. This is a very important tip, tool cupboard upkeep. TC upkeep is what's going to keep your base alive and standing. Make sure before you disconnect from your Rust server that your tool cupboard upkeep is always around about 24 hours. That is personally what I like to keep it at because I'm not sure if I'm going to be getting on that same day or not. If you play every once every couple of days, make sure the upkeep is obviously higher so that your base doesn't decay while you're offline. The tool cupboard will tell you what resources are required and how much of the resource is required. Keep in mind that the bigger the base, the higher the amount of resources required for your upkeep. Rust days are 45 minutes long and rust nights are 15 minutes long on official vanilla servers. Keep in mind as well that when it's nighttime, it is going to be colder. So if you don't have high cold protection, avoid going to snowy areas and avoid getting wet. This will make you lose health a lot faster and you don't dry off in the snow. This also applies to some other areas. If it is nighttime and you get wet, sometimes you can get too cold and start losing HP from that as well, depending on your cold protection. Split your uncooked meat into three stacks in your campfire to ensure the meat doesn't burn. You can still eat burnt meat, although it's significantly worse in comparison to normal cooked meat. Don't eat raw meat because you will get poison from it, even though I like my chicken medium rare in real life. If you're desperate for food or water and you're in a desert, Hitting a cactus with some tools can collect cactus flesh, which you can eat, and it will regen some of your hunger and hydration. When transferring loot or farming, if you have stacks of wood, you can craft TCs to free up extra space for extra stacks of wood. Keep in mind, if you don't cancel the TC before it crafts, you will obviously waste that one stack of wood by crafting a tool cupboard. Press tab and press cross the crafting tool cupboard before it crafts to cancel the crafting tool cupboard. You might have to do this multiple times depending on how long you'll be traveling with your multiple stacks of wood crafting TCs. If you're not confident with PVP or you don't want to get offline, try not to be overly toxic to avoid getting griefed, door camps, online raided or worse, offline raided. This will reduce the amount of enemies you make on a server and increase the chances of you being able to play with your same base the next day. The Balti. The Balti can sometimes be perceived as just a roof camper's weapon but in fact, it is actually an extremely powerful weapon to roam with. I roam with it all the time personally because the Balti can one-hit headshot, hazmat suits, coffee can helmets, and any tier below that from 100 meters or less. So they're always going to be free kits as long as you become efficient at hitting headshots with the Balti. Rust Pro tip of the day. Press that big long button on your keyboard, also known as the spacebar, to jump. Back to legitimate tips. Silent jumping through shallow water is actually completely silent if you do it properly. I will show you a video after this, but what you have to do is hold shift, hold W and spam spacebar. You will listen to my spacebar getting spammed in a second, but that is how you silent jump through the water. As long as it's shallow enough, it will be completely silent. It's only client side, so you'll slightly hear it, but other players will not hear it. You'll also see my teammate doing it. When you crouch through water, it now makes a noise. So crouching while you're in water makes a noise now. Just keep that in mind, the only way to get through Water silently is by what I like to call silent jumping through shallow water. Wasn't it? Come here so I can show this in the video. Mm -hmm. You hearing that? So I can move. Nope. Yeah. So we still hear client side noise, but this isn't actually making a noise. As you can see, my homie here is doing it as well. If you crouch, walk in water. Come here and do it. Come here and crouch walk. If you crouch walk in water, it makes noise now. So the only way to be quiet and move through water is by holding shift, spamming spacebar, and getting it at the right time. Sorry that you're gonna hear my spacebar. You can build square and twig floors on other people's bases in order to get up into higher locations or locations that would require to be boosted. Keep in mind, you can also boost off of other items such as other players' drop boxes if placed incorrectly, horses, or other teammate players. A way to see if you're getting door camped is by placing a campfire at your front door, turning it on, and if your comfort goes up above 50%, you're getting door camped by a player that is too close. Because you're both so close to the campfire, you're both getting comfort from it, and that is a giveaway that there is a player on the other side of the door. Keep in mind, if your teammate in your base is too close, the comfort will also be shared with them. So make sure that they're further away so that you can have a more accurate reading of whether you're getting door camped or not. Note that this also doesn't work if the player that is door camping you is too far away. Kill wolves and farm them for their skulls. 
to craft wolf headdresses. Pairing a wolf headdress and a bandana together gives you as much projectile protection as a coffee can helmet. It's a very good substitute if you do not have the coffee can helmet blueprint. On top of that, if you have the rat mask skin, dragon mask skin, or that dumb bird looking skin, they all craft faster than the wolf headdress and are just a skin version of the wolf headdress. So if you do have them, craft them instead because they're going to craft faster than the 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure it's 5 seconds. Pay to win. Glow sight guns, skins, are no longer accepted in the game, which is why they're so expensive, but they can be beneficial at night and give you a slight advantage over your enemy as long as they don't have one or a torch. Keep this in mind when choosing your skins to buy off of the community market, but also keep in mind that is why they're so expensive. And the final tip for this video is overcome gear fear. Gear fear is going to be in a lot of games and especially in Rust and survival games. So gear fear is when you have an item that you don't want to lose. For example, you're naked and you just got an SAR, you want to bring it back to base, but then you actually get proper geared and then you never want to take that semi-automatic rifle SAR out of the base. This is bad because taking a worst kit will actually decrease your chances of survival and increase your chances of actually losing your kit. So if you have the gear fear, my recommendation is to just try not to think about it, take the kit out and go out and see how you go. You could potentially go from SAR to AK or SAR to another SAR or you could possibly die but at least you get that experience for next time you do get the SAR again just as an example. This example can be related to any item you have, fear of losing. Just keep in mind that you will be able to get that item again, and it's not going to be the end of the world if you do lose that item. So have fun with it. And last but not least, as Deku says, a good laugh with your mates above all else. Enjoy the game and good luck. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and remember, have a skits one.